Thank you to everyone for joining me. I'm going to be walking you through a quick tutorial on using webhooks and Zapier. And my name is Matt, and I'm with Narango. And I'm the co-founder here. So let's jump right into it. Uh, once we're in your Zapier account, you're going to go ahead and make a Zap. And put that together here. And we're going to look for the built-in webhooks application, webhooks by Zapier. And that's going to allow us to actually uh, catch the hook. We're going to do a get here. And we're going to just receive the post coming from our dashboard. So save and continue. And pick off a child key. Now what we can do is we can filter information coming from the webhook. And so once you have a clear idea of what each um, key looks like uh, coming from your uh, phone call, uh, webhook you'll be able to take information out and filter only what you want for example uh, you might have the caller ID something like this uh, and then only uh, send yourself that caller ID let's move past that for now you can always go and set that up afterwards we're gonna copy the webhook URL to the clipboard here and we're gonna go over now into the dashboard so I'm already here as you can see in the webhooks application and I'm gonna go ahead and click on new webhook I'm gonna give it a custom name call push and I'm gonna have that go on channel answer now that just means when a device actually picks up the call then we're gonna post the information and then the URL field here, we're going to post that Zapier webhook URL. And if you would like, you can add some custom information. Custom key being, uh, for example, test key. Uh, I might want to say from call push hook or any other data that you'd like. Let's go ahead and create that webhook. And there it is, and it's active. We've also got the retry time, a default set to one. And if there's any error with pushing that initially, it will retry uh, once more. And you'll be able to catch that error up here and uh, view those in the webhooks manager. Now let's go back to Zapier. And what we're going to do is let them know that we have gone ahead and uh, hooked this all up on our side. OK, I did this. OK, now looking for the hook. We're going to pull out our phone. Okay. I'm going to do a voicemail call here. And it should be any second. There we go. Nice high definition audio there. So the test is completely successful. And so we're going to go ahead now and view the webhook just so we can filter out the data and see what we've got here so we've got the from which is the extension and the realm or domain the account ID associated with the accounts and uh, some other internal information the device type or sorry authorizing type which was a device the request made so where we called now on an external call this of course will be you know the 10 digit uh, etc phone number instead of the voicemail and the call direction um, a caller ID name hook event so it was a channel answer and again the two information now if this was an inbound call you could go and grab that caller ID from the caller as well as where they called and those fields there were the ones that you can use to actually parse out the child keys uh, during setup. You can go back and edit that at any time as well by going back to webhooks and retrieving those child key filters here. Now for the next app you can certainly do whatever you wish with it. For example you could have this uh, push to a Google uh, Doc spreadsheet or you could simply have the information sent right to your email address using SMTP by Zapier and that simply looks like this set up your email information 
uh, from, to, etc. And the body would be any number of the child keys here. Uh, you could send any of the filtered data or all of them for that matter. And it'll automatically be, be sent to email. And that's the basics. So thank you very much for uh, checking this out. And happy calling. Thank you.